This is Holly Bennett here with Triathlete Magazine, and I'm reporting in from beautiful Taipei, Taiwan. And I'm here to cover the Challenge Taiwan race, and I'm with women's defending champion Belinda Granger, who is uh, about to make a, an historic milestone by racing her 50th Iron Distance event. Now, I want to do a brief interview with Belinda, but let me just preface this by uh, giving our viewers a little bit of insight. Asking Belinda for a brief interview can be a little bit comical, just because if you know her at all, she's, she's known for talking quite a bit and talking, talking, talking. However, it's only because she has such wonderful things to say. So we'll try and keep this under 10 minutes. All right, Belinda, let's start it off with, um, on that note, why don't you tell the viewers what your nickname is? Well, it's actually, it wasn't, it's not originally my nickname. It became my nickname way back when I first started teaching, um, a colleague that I used to teach with um, was getting me a Yahoo email address and he said, what would you like your email address to be? And I said, ah, you make it up, whatever, whatever you think it should be. And he came up with the BJ Mega Mouth and of course BJ is my initials, Belinda Jane, and Mega Mouth, well that speaks for itself and it's just stuck since then. So, you know, it's funny, I don't even think about it anymore, but sometimes when I'm giving my email address over the phone to, you know, important people like banks, etc., I get... Uh, BJ Megamouth, and they're like, Megamouth? I said, yeah, well, if you knew me, you'd understand why. It's very appropriate. So it's just sort of stuck, and now I chuckle at it. Perfect. Um, so Saturday will mark your 50th Iron Distance race. What I'm curious about is, if your body would hold up, would you do it all over again? Look, absolutely. And, my, and you know, I think that's been my greatest strength in the sport is uh, my longevity. My body just doesn't break. Um, even now, I could probably, the body could do another 50. It's the head that says, it's coming to an end. Uh, physically, it's not an issue. The training's not an issue. The racing's not an issue over this distance. But it's the, the mental side. And, you know, as with any long distance triathlon, that's what it comes down to at the end of the day, if you're mentally tough enough and if you want to do it. And I always said that once I felt like enough was enough, then that was it. I was going to walk away. And I set myself a goal quite a few years ago now that I wanted to make it to 50. The only problem is I thought that was a huge milestone until I went and talked to Peter Vabruzek who can't even remember when he did 50, it was that long ago. <laughs> but uh, for me, for a girl that said back in 1997 or 96 that I was never ever going to do this distance, it's a fairly large milestone for me. So yeah, I could keep going, but uh, I'm choosing, 50 is a nice round number to finish. Do you have any special surprises planned for your race on Saturday? For my 50th? Um, just to enjoy the day, you know, I think I've, I've spent so many years going in with such high expectations. Uh, back in the day, you know, I wanted nothing but to win. And then it was, okay, we just want to get a podium. And coming here last year and getting the title was completely unexpected. I, I'll be honest, I did not think that I was going to get the title. I thought that would probably go to Kate. Um, so that was an added bonus. So this year I promised myself that I'm not going to put any expectations on my 50th one. I just want to go out there and enjoy it for what it is and make sure that, that I don't that I don't like, not enjoy it just because I'm too busy on trying to work out where I am and trying to get you know first place or second place or third place. I really want to just savour the moment and when I cross the finish line, just soak it all up. Because as you know, the finish line of any Ironman distance race, doesn't matter where you are or what number you're up to, it's an, it's an amazing achievement. Do you think you'll cry at the finish line? Yeah, that's a tough one, you know, because I'm definitely a very emotional person and uh, very animated, as you know. Um, and I thought I would cry last year at Challenge Roth because I knew it was going to be my last one, my 10th one and my last race there. And I didn't because I was just too happy. So I thought I would cry, but it was just such an amazing atmosphere and so many people cheering and yelling and that I just, I got so caught up in the moment, there was no time to cry. Uh, but I don't know, this, you know, seeing as this one could be, well, it was my 50th and could be my last one, um, probably will be my last one. Yeah, it'll be interesting and it might not hit me straight away. It might not hit me till I come back down to the finish line later that night and see all the, the um, slower finishes coming through. That that's when I will probably get quite emotional, I would imagine. I have a couple of rapid fire questions for you. Rapid fire. And these are going to be hard for you, I know it. <laughs> yes, because I'm not rapid at anything. <laughs> You're not, but let's just try, okay? Okay. So of all 49 Iron Distance races you've done to date, which one has been your favourite? And yes, you have to pick just one. Now that's very difficult and obviously I was, I was looking at this question before and thinking what is it going to be. I would have to start to say the one that I had, that someone, and I don't even know what photographer captured the best photo of me ever, 
uh, was the year that I won Challenge Roth, so it was my second year at Challenge Roth, and I, I was second the first year I did the race, and then I came back the following year and I won it, and I would have to say that that was probably the most prestigious and most amazing race that I've ever won, and hence why I've continued to go back there year after year after year, and someone at the finish line took a photo of me that I didn't know they were taking, and the look on my face is priceless. It's just such sheer, like, excitement that I finally won this, that I won this race. So I would have to say that Challenge Roth would be my best win ever. Th that was somewhat rapid fire. <laughs> so let's try another one. We'll do that which that one, one, which one was your hardest? Hardest? Oi, oi, oi. Uh, it'd have to probably be, oh my gosh. I man China the first year. And not because it was that competitive, but because of the absolute excruciating heat and for the sheer fact that they got the marathon wrong and it was 43k. And even though I was leading by over 30 minutes, I actually cried the last two kilometres because I knew that I'd completed a marathon and the finish line was nowhere in sight. So that was by far the hardest. Which one was the most surprising? Most surprising. The second year I won Ironman Malaysia. Oh no, or was it Ironman Canada? No, Ironman Canada. No, I changed my mind. Okay. Ironman Canada, the first year I went over, uh, when I finally beat Lisa Bentley, and this is no disrespect to Lisa, but she'd been beating me in Ironman Australia forever. Um, when I went over there, my coach said that I would win it. Brett Sutton said I would win it, and I did. That was the most surprising. And I have a feeling I know the answer to this one, but where have you had the most fun at the after party? <laughs> oh, I think that goes with no, no saying. The most fun after party, after an Ironman distance race is by far Challenge Roth. Every year, hands down. And every year, hands down, I outdo myself from the year before. <laughs> and why did you choose Challenge Taiwan in particular for your 50th milestone? Look, I love supporting races that make such a great effort. And you know, it was Michael Dulce, the race director, did such an amazing job for a first year race last year. I mean, we were just, I think all the pros were quite shocked at how well we were treated and just everything done for us. Apart from that, it was an amazing race too. And that's why we've got all the same pros back here again this year, because it was just so fantastic. Like the whole entire experience. The timing fit well. I wanted to do a challenge race as my 50th, because ch the challenge series itself has been so special to me throughout my entire career. And I just think Michael did such a terrific job last year that I couldn't wait to return this year. So um, part of your decision to retire at the end of this year was wanting to be home in Noosa a little bit more. and. In preparation for that, you and Justin have recently um, expanded your family. So tell us about your puppy. Oh, we've been wanting to get a dog for that long and we just couldn't do it because we just we spent six months of the year overseas and I just think, didn't think it would be fair on the dog or my parents would end up looking after the dog. So I was actually going to wait till we were completely retired, but then I thought, you know, that I didn't know when that was going to be and I thought, you know, the dog will end up outliving us the rate right we're going. So I finally just put my foot down and when we got home, um, after last year, I said, we're getting a puppy. So we got a puppy, a little Cocker Spaniel called Mackie, and of course, she's all over Facebook and Twitter every day because I love it to pieces. So yeah, we want to spend more time at home. Not just because of that too. I think I'm at a point in my career where I still absolutely love it, and that's how I want to remember it. So I don't want to think that I have to keep racing because there's nothing else. And I think I've been so fortunate to have such an amazing career, such a long career, um, with very little injury or sickness, and. I just don't want to get greedy. And I just thought at the end of this year, I know that I'll be at a stage where, yes, if I wanted to keep racing, I could, but if I stop, I'm good with it. And there's just other things I want to do. So it's, it's just, the timing just fit perfectly. So in your 20 plus years of racing, you've really traveled the world and you've had unbelievable adventures all in the name of triathlon. So what would you say to encourage people who might be nervous to venture outside their comfort zone and try an international race? Oh, I mean, I can't even begin to tell you what an experience it is. It's, it's shaped me into the person I am today. The Belinda Granger of today is, you know, 90% is because of, of my sport, is because of triathlon. You know, the countries I've visited, the people I've met, all my friends all around the world, the experiences I've had, I mean, they are, you can't put a price on that. They're, they are priceless and they're memories that I'll treasure forever. Uh, triathlon is, is a way of life for me now. Uh, and my husband, we've been lucky to be able to share this adventure together. And 20 years, I think 15 years as a professional athlete, and it's been the most amazing adventure of my life. And uh, I cannot say enough how 
much of an adventure it is to, to travel overseas and race. And it's not just about the race day, it's about the whole experience. And that's why I would tell anyone out there, it doesn't matter whether you're an age group, or good, bad, fast, slow, old, young, you've got to at least do one or two races overseas. Get out of your comfort zone because you will not regret it and you will have the time of your life and just, it will make you just a more complete person. It really does. Well, Belinda, I'm pretty impressed because we kept that right to about 10 minutes. So um, <laughs> if your timing is this good on... I can keep going if you want. <laughs> no, no, no. But if your timing is this good on race day, I think it's going to be a good one for you. So oh, with so. that, I'm going to wish you good luck. Thank you, Holly. And I'll be pretty excited to share the day with you out awesome. there. Oh, me too. Thanks awesome. so much. Thank you.